My powers are ordinary. Only my application brings me success. Welcome everybody, it's Amel, and today we're going to solve Delete Nodes and Return Forest. Given the root of a binary tree, each node in the tree has a distinct value. After deleting all nodes with a value into delete, we are left with a forest, a disjoint union of trees. Return the roots of the trees in the remaining forest. You may return the result in any order. So here we have an example. We're given this tree, as you can see here, and then we have to delete the nodes that contain the values 3 and 5. So we delete the node that contains the value 3, and by doing that, then we have this tree with the root 6 and this tree with the root 7, as you can see. And then we also have to delete the node with value 5. So after deleting the node with value 5, which is this one here, we have this tree with root 1 that has the nodes 1, 2, and 4, as you can see. So we remove this node and we are left with this tree here, this tree here, and this tree here, and we also remove this node. So how can we solve this problem? We can use a post-order traversal to solve this problem. So we can use that first search, DFS. We want to use a post-order traversal because we want to go all the way down to the leaf node. We want to start from the bottom and go up. So as we go back up the tree, we want to fix the links. We want to remove the nodes by returning null. So we're going to use a post-order traversal. Remember, in a post-order traversal, we process the left subtree, then we process the right subtree, and finally we process the root node. So we're going to remove all the nodes in the left subtree, then we're going to remove all the nodes in the right subtree, and finally we have to take care of the root. If the root is in the to-delete array, then we have to return null because we have to delete this node. If it is not there, then we don't have to delete the node. So what we do is that we return the root itself. So the main idea is to use recursion to use the first search. And we go all the way down to the bottom. And as we go back up the tree, we fix the links to remove the nodes. And we use a set because we want to find the elements in constant time. We want to check if a node has to be deleted in constant time, so that's why we have to use a set, a hash set. So without further ado, I'm going to write the code. So we have to have a list of reference to tree node, and this is going to be the final result, gets the value of new array list. Then if the entire tree is empty, in this case, we return the empty list because there's nothing to do. There's no node to delete. So we return result. Then we have to have a set of integer. And in the set, we're going to have all the values in the to-delete array. So this is going to be a new hash set. Then I'm going to put all the values in this array inside the set. So I'm going to say for integer x into delete, then to delete, this is the set that add x. Then I want to call my helper method, and this helper method is going to do a post order traversal using recursion. So the main purpose of the helper method is to remove the nodes. So I'm going to call this method remove nodes. So remove nodes. I have to pass the root of the tree, I have to pass to delete, which is the hash set, and I also have to pass the final result, because I'm going to populate this final result list um, as I do the post order traversal of the tree. Then as I said, we're going to take we want to take care of the left of tree, then the right of tree, and finally the root. So when we return from this method, we have to check if the root has to be deleted. If the root doesn't have to be deleted, then we have to add it to the final result. So we're going to do that. So if not to delete that contains 
root.value, that means that we don't have to delete the root, so we have to add it. So we say result.add the root. And finally, we return the final result. So return result. So now, this is the main algorithm, and we have to work on the helper method, which is the def first search. So here I have a private, and it's going to return a reference to a tree node, and it's going to be remove nodes. So it takes three arguments, so a reference to a node, the root, a set of integer to delete, and a list of reference to tree node, the final result. So this is the helper method that's going to perform the post-order traverse of the tree. So the base case is when we traverse all the way down to a null link. So we go all the way down to the bottom, and as we traverse all the way down to the bottom, when we hit a null link, that's going to be the base case, and we have to return back up. So if root equals equals null, if we hit a null link, then we return null. So if if the node does not exist, just return null. Now that we have the base case, remember, we're performing a post-order traversal. So first we have to process the left subtree and then the right subtree. So let's remove all the nodes in the left subtree recursively. We can say root.left gets the value of remove nodes in the left subtree I have to pass to delete and also the final result. Then I have to process the right subtree. So root that right gets a value of remove node, root that right to delete and the final result. And now we have to process the root node. So um, there are two possibilities here. One possibility is that we have to delete the root. Another possibility is that we do not have to delete the root. So if if to delete if to delete that contains root that value, in this particular case we have to delete the root. If that's not the case, then we don't have to delete it, so we can simply return it back up. So as we perform the traversal, we just return it back up because we don't have to delete the root. However, if we have to delete it, then we need to return null. And that's how we can disconnect it from the tree, and it can be deleted. Also, we have to take care of the children, because when we process the left subtree, then the right subtree, and finally the root node, if we had to delete the left child, then we don't add it to the final result. However, what if we didn't have to delete the left child? In that case, we have to add this node to the result. So if root.left is not equal to null, that means that we didn't have to delete the left child, so we have to add it to the final result. So result.add root.left. Similarly, if root.right is not equal to null, then we didn't delete the right child, so we have to add it to the final result. So result that add root that right. And we have completed the post order traversal. So now we just have to run the code. And then I'm going to submit my solution. Okay, this is working perfectly. So now let's talk about the time complexity and the space complexity. So the time complexity is big O of m plus n, where m is the length of the to delete array and n is the number of nodes in the tree. As you can see, we have to put all the elements in this array, we have to put those elements in a set. So that's going to take big O of m time where m is the length of the array. And we have to traverse the entire tree, so that's going to take big O of n time, 
where n is the number of nodes of the tree. So the time complexity is big of m plus n. The space complexity is big of m plus h, where m is the length of the 2D lead array and h is the height of the tree. If you like this video, please press the like button, don't forget to subscribe, and see you next time.